Hey guys, VBAD here with another VPlace, taking a look at the Yak-1M, and before we start talking about the airframe in this battle, I think I fixed the voice modulation issue, so hopefully no more robot voice. I hope it comes across in the video once I'm able to render it. So, Yak-1M. No, your eyes are not deceiving you. I am indeed in a turn and burn fighter, and I figured I'd give it a shot. I did have the Yak 1 up when I was doing the beginner's guide video for a turn and burn fighter, and eventually I got to the 1M. Now, being that this is just a minor modification on the original, you're going to essentially have the same airframe, but with a little bit more in all aspects because it's going to have to remain competitive for its tier, being that it is now a tier 6 opposed to a tier 5. Now, one of the things I never really liked about these turn and burn fighters is that a turn and burn fighter typically doesn't have the speed to be able to get around the battlefield. And as you can see here, we're very altitude restricted. This thing doesn't like going above 3,000 feet, which is extremely limited. Especially when you're Enemy talking about a map like this one, because everything's raised up on like these elevated plateaus. So as a result, I'm already at a higher altitude. So it makes things a little bit difficult. I'm going to have to pretty much be hugging the ground or pushing myself outside of my engagement envelope. But with a complement of 250 cal machine guns and a hub mounted 20 millimeter cannon, all of these are centerline, that gives me a lot more oomph and a lot more accuracy on these guns. And with the fully upgraded engine on this aircraft, it actually has a pretty decent acceleration for the relatively short boost, which allows it to be able to get up to its top speed relatively quickly and allows it to get that nose around very rapidly since this is going to be a low altitude turn and burn fighter it is going to be able to be competitive now i got lit on fire there and i am not carrying a fire extinguisher unfortunately but i was able to take out a few aircraft before i was finally eliminated and here we saw i was taken out by the enemy player in the p-47n so yes i am out here there's only two players in this match it is me and it is the other player in a tier 7 p-47n and it's going to be a little bit of a challenge in order to uh, keep this match in our favor. Now, if I really want to win this match, I need to take that airfield. This aircraft is great for being able to go to a center point objective, turn over that objective, continuously doing that turn and burn fight, in gaining and maintaining air superiority in that sector. So it's great when you have a center objective like this. What becomes difficult is when you start having the objective spread out around the periphery, kind of like with Archipelago, and you find yourself uh, having to kind of make very long treks to get to objectives, which is not what this aircraft is really meant to do. So we're gonna settle in, we're gonna settle in here and start isolating targets and gunning them down as we see them come available. Uh, like I said, the combination of the 250s and the 20 is more than enough to be able to take out a lot of these fighter-sized targets, but you are going to find yourself struggling when it comes to going up against some of these ground attack aircraft, and I don't really want to sit behind this IL-2T because this 50 cal machine gun will be enough to start ripping me up. I believe it's a 50 cal on the IL-2T. Either way, it's definitely causing me some pain, so I'm trying to come in from the sides on this aircraft, and I am lighting him on fire period and as the 20 millimeter cannon overheats, I am breaking off from the engagement and then re-engaging again, preferably from coming up from underneath him, so that way his gunner doesn't have the gun depression to get on me. Now I've taken out that aircraft, so he's not taking any of my objective points by killing any of the ground structures, and now I can move on to start targeting other aircraft. Now I would like to help my ally in this ground attacker from a similar fate to this P-40 defense aircraft, and unfortunately I'm just not making contact so we'll just have to live with that situation. We did manage to take the airfield which is excellent because now we're in a good spot. Uh, yes we have lost the garrison that is at the spawn behind us uh, but if we can keep this fur ball, this kill ball if you would, which we are definitely a part of, uh, moving towards the enemy command center, then we can continually start closing on that objective because we're going to have the benefit of respawning at this airfield, which means now it's really just a test of skill. How fast can you kill the enemy aircraft and keep pushing that fight 
closer and closer to the command center. Now fortunately for me I'm able to line up three kills very quickly here. We took out that F4U1, we took out the P39N, and or P39Q rather, and then we just took out a low health P51. And now we have a, my duplicate here, the Yak-1 moving in, but you can see I am in the objective circle for this command center. It didn't take long. We were able to slowly push our way in, and now we have we are fighting in their zone, and we are making them, we're forcing them onto the defensive at this stage. So things are going well for us. I'm trying to find some of these air defense aircraft, getting my shots in where I can. I am getting shot a little bit from behind. I'm not sure where this is coming from. Am I able to kill that guy? Yes, perfect. Got that aircraft. And there's that heavy fighter coming in on top of me. I didn't see it. You guys probably are going to see it on the mini-map. Of course, hindsight's 2020, But it looks like that was a mosquito that was diving on me. So, But it looks like my allies were able to regain that other garrison that was near our spawn. And now we have the advantage of spawning in the middle again. And trying to help out our allies as they continue to try to take the command center. However, we are about to hit Squall Line. This is another advantage of taking what, I would, what I've termed as a major airfield, the one that has the icon of an aircraft with two engines on the wings. It looks kind of like a ME-262 if you look at the airfield icon in the center, top center of my screen. These airfields also have a repair facility on them, so with Squall Line popping up, this is going to be a great option to be able to top off my health after I get into my engagements while the, al while the enemies are going to possibly have to get back into a fight at lower health, because you can only regen approximately a third of your health on most aircraft. Keep it up! Victory is almost now, ours! I'm trying to find targets that are otherwise engaged. It looks like this guy is trying to fight one of our defense aircraft. I don't want him to take it because then that would mean that he would get some capture points. But on top of that, I also want to isolate and kill this guy while he's distracted. And so that way I can get some more capture points. Now here's a Yak-1M coming in on me. This is one of the things you need to be aware of. Looking at that mini-map, I can see that that triangle, the only one that's coming right towards me is this P-47N. Now, I yeah, I did. I ran him. I'm not proud of that moment. I thought I could have killed him with the guns, but if he was willing to try for a ram, I'm willing to let him hit me because I knew that I had the health compared to him going into that engagement. So I'm not proud of that moment, but I did manage to take out the only player at Squall Line, which means now I'm relatively free and clear when it comes to targets I wouldn't otherwise... Um, I wouldn't be able to predict, right? It's easy to predict bots for the most part, but it's hard to predict other players. You saw I climbed up too high there and I got the stall speed. You never want to get to that situation. That's an easy kill for anybody who's watching you, so definitely a mistake on my part. We're in danger of losing this airfield as well as a garrison, but the match is pretty much over at this point. We secure that last kill in order to make sure that they weren't able to capture anything else, and it gave us our 18th kills. So let's hit the post-battle results and talk more about it there. Alright, so as you can see, playing with these turn and burn fighters is, you are a little bit hard pressed to be able to affect all altitude blocks as well as a large portion of the map. Fortunately, the 1M seems to have a pretty decent top speed despite the low boost time and it's able to accelerate to that top speed fairly easily, allowing you to be able to somewhat maneuver across the map in a reasonable amount of time, but I wouldn't expect you to be able to get to a key objective just in the nick of time. It's going to be more of a making a very tactical decision as to I'm going to go to this objective now, I'm going to take, hold, defend, and that's going to be your primary role in this airframe. Now, you saw we got a little bit lucky, everybody was kind of in a lower altitude block, and we we're fortunate, fortunate enough to have an airfield located in the center of the map. An airfield in the center of the map is going to be the bread and butter of a turn and burn fighter because it's going to allow your allies that are going to have that offensive capability are going to have that speed and ability to affect other portions of the battlefield to do their job respawn quicker have a better respawn point in the middle of the map so they can farm out from there and i'm starting to realize more how important an airfield can be although 
if I'm going to be in one of those strategic assets, I'm not going to focus the airfield. The airfield is really where you're going to want your turn and burn type fighters to be operating because they almost have to park in that area. We made out pretty well here. This is the times two, and I am running a premium account, so I was able to rake in about 8,500 uh, experience points. And on top of that, I also got over 14,000 on my personal points, so we did get Winged Legend, and we actually got a Grade 1 Fighter, which is nice to have. I've only gotten Grade 1 a, few, a handful of times, I think, in my career of flying in World of Warplanes, so that was nice. And at Tier 6, to get 74,000 credits is not too bad either. I think I'm actually running Universal Ammo on this, since it only has three guns. Let's verify that. Yep, I am running Universal Ammo in order to make the best use out of what is a very small gun configuration. You only have three guns. Two of them are 50 cal machine guns, so it's well worth the cost. Uh, it actually costs more in 50 cal ammo than it does in 20s, and considering the credit income, <clears throat> excuse me, it's going to be more than enough to be able to pay for itself. Uh, we managed to take out 18 aircraft, assist with two. Uh, we did 23 times we did critical damage, so I guess it was worth it. Oh, I don't think I've seen this step before. That is awesome. Uh, yeah, so this is the amount of times you cause fire and the amount of times you cause critical damage. You can see uh, one, two, three, four different aircraft we started fires on. Several of them we started fires on twice, and then we also crippled multiple times on multiple airframes as well. So this is a great way to see what the bang for your buck is by comparison between the universal ammo and running just regular ammunition. So that is a nice thing to know as well. All right. Oh, this even breaks out what type of target you took out. I did not know that that was part of the new GUI interface. That is nice to know. Um, yep, and we also got Hero the Sky Badge, which is for getting a Grade 1. So it's kind of like a twofer. You get Grade 1 and you get Hero the Sky, so that's nice to have. Uh, yeah, we did pretty well. Uh, Clicky, you did a good job as well. It's just unfortunate for you that uh, your bots weren't able to maintain the main facility and we were slowly pushing them back to that command center, which is really keeping them at bay. I've had plenty of unlucky matches today. This is just one of my better ones and a great opportunity to highlight the Yak-1M since the Yak-1M, it's not going to take me too long to get out of this airframe and into the Yak-3 since it's only going to take 62,000 experience. And if I I'm able to rack up uh, about 8,500 once a day. I should be able to get through this in about a week, which is not too bad considering I am grinding quite a few aircraft. And VBAT, where's your FJ-1? A little teaser for what's to come in the future. All right, guys, as always, like, favorite, comment, subscribe if you liked what you saw. And if you didn't like what you saw, go ahead and drop it in the comments whether or not or what it was that you would like to see different and then we'll see if we can adjust that in the future uh, and as always i'll catch you guys on the next one